Hello everyone, in this video we will be solving a problem on the velocity analysis of slider crank mechanism using the instantaneous center method. So here you are given with a slider crank mechanism where crank length is 100 mm, connecting rod length is 400 mm, crank is rotating at 10 radians per second in the clockwise direction and here you have to locate all the instantaneous centers and Using this instantaneous center method, you have to evaluate the velocity of this slider. That means this slider or point A and you have to find the angular velocity of the connecting rod AB. So at the instant when the uh, angle turned by crank is 45 degree from the IDC. So based on the given details, first we will be constructing the configuration diagram and this will be drawn to a scale of 1 centimeter equivalent to 50 mm so that you will be drawing a horizontal line first which is representing the line of motion with respect to that at 45 degree I will be drawing the line that is corresponding to crank since crank is 100 mm and according to the scale of 50 mm this can be represented by a 2 cm line and with this point taking a distance equivalent to 400 mm that means using the scale 8 cm line will be taken on combos and that will be cutting on this line of motion and at this point you will be getting the point A. So at this point A, the connecting rod and slider are, uh, are making contact. So you can complete the configuration diagram. So next we will be applying the instantaneous center method. So first you will be calculating the number of instantaneous center for this one. This slider crank mechanism is a 4 bar mechanism and the number of instantaneous center is given by n into n minus 1 divided by 2 which is equal to 4 into 4 minus 1 by 2. So here this will be equal to 6 where the value of n is 4 the number of links is 4 and now you have to name the instantaneous centers and then we will be locating so the instantaneous centers are i will be represented by representing by i suffix first i will be naming the links 1 here all links are numbered the fixed link is 1 crank is 2 connecting rod is 3 and slider is 4 and again this fixed link is 1 so here I will be making different combinations. So first instant, instantaneous center will be I12, next will be I13 and third will be I14 and next I will be writing I2. Now I can consider the combinations with I21 but it is equivalent to I12, I22 is not there, next I23 and I24 and last I34. And I31 is equivalent to I13, I32 is equal to I23. And similarly, the I41 is equal to I14, I42 is I24, and I43 is I34 itself. So now you can see the six instantaneous centers. This 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6. And this 6 is the total number of instantaneous centers. Now you have named all instantaneous centers. Next, we will be locating this instantaneous centers on this one. So first, I12 will be the point of rotation about which link 2 and 1 are having relative motion. So this one will be giving you the I12 instantaneous center of rotation 1 2 and this will be giving you the instantaneous center between 2 and 3 that is I23 or I32 and this point where the slider and connecting rod are getting joined and that will be the point I34 and next you are knowing that the slider which is the link number 4 is having a linear motion with respect to the ground so with respect to the ground it is moving in this direction for which i already mentioned in the previous video the instantaneous center for a slider with respect to a fixed ground will be lying at the infinity so you can mark the instantaneous center between link 4 and ground that is one that is i will be naming that instantaneous center as i14 and that is lying at infinity so i14 is at infinity so out of this instantaneous centers already you have marked i12 we have marked one figure i23 we have located i34 we have located and i14 also we have located next you have to locate the instantaneous centers i13 and i24 for that we will be using the kennedy's theorem so for getting i13 so we have to obtain this i13 i13 will be at the intersection of 
I14, I34. If you are considering here, I14 is at infinity and I34 at this point. So in the names I14 and I34, 4 is common. Remaining numbers are 1, 3. So if you are joining this two instantaneous centers, in this line, the third instantaneous center, that is I13 will be lying according to the Kennedy's theorem. Similarly, you are having instantaneous centers I12 and I23 here. In this common number is 2. Remaining numbers are 1 and 3. So if you are joining this line I12 and I23, in this line, the third instantaneous center I13 will be lying. So if you are in uh, projecting this or extending these lines, then you can obtain. So I will be projecting this line. So in the straight line, I13 will be lying. And also I will be projecting this line. So in this line, the instantaneous center I13 will be lying at this intercept. So this point will be giving you the instantaneous center I13. So now we have located this I13 also. Next we have to locate this I24. So for that also you will be using the instantaneous, uh, sorry, Kennedy's theorem. So you are knowing that here I14 is at infinity. So I14 is located at this point and it is assumed to be at infinity. Since this link length 400 mm as well as 100 mm are nothing compared to infinity, you can transfer the I14 which is located at this point at infinity can also be transferred to this location. So I can mark the instantaneous center or I14 which is also coming at this location at infinity also. So I14 at infinity. Now you have to locate the last instantaneous center that is I24. So here if you are considering I14 is there, I12 is there, common number is 1, remaining numbers are 2 and 4. So I24 will be lying at the on the line connecting these two instantaneous centers according to Kennedy's theorem. Similarly, you are having I34 here, I23 here, common number is 3, remaining numbers are 2 and 4. So if you are extending this line, you will be in this line, the third I center that is I24 will be lying. So now I will be drawing or extending these lines. So in this line, the instantaneous center I24 will be lying and in this line, the instantaneous center 24 will be lying. So now I can locate the last instantaneous center this at this point and this will be giving you the last or sixth instant instantaneous center i24 uh, so now we have located all the instantaneous centers next we will be applying the or we will be finding the velocity velocity of slider or point a you have to evaluate as well as the angular velocity of the connecting rod that is a b you have to evaluate for which you will be making use of this instantaneous center I13. So in this problem, the angular velocity of link OB is given and OB is having pure rotational motion about this point O. So that B will be having a velocity that is perpendicular to the link OB. That is in this direction you will be getting. So in this direction you will be getting the velocity of B. And similarly, if it is the slider will be moving along horizontal way, so the velocity of slider will be coming in this direction. So I will be marking those velocity vectors here. So if you are marking perpendicular to OB, this will be the velocity vector and I can call this as velocity of B with respect to O, which is a zero velocity point. And here I can mark the velocity of point A with respect to again fixed ground. So I will be calling this as VA. So if you are considering the same instantaneous center I13 can also be obtained if you are drawing perpendiculars to the velocity vectors VA and VB. So if I am drawing perpendicular to velocity vector VA, this will be going in this direction. If I am drawing perpendicular to the velocity vector VB, this will be going in this direction and that will be meeting at this point which is giving the same instantaneous center I13. So here, first I will be looking for the link OB. The velocity of VB can be written in terms of angular velocity of link OB or crank which is given as 10 radians per second. So first I will be writing the 
velocity of point B equal to the crank length OB into omega of crank that is OB. So crank length given is 100 mm equivalent to 0.1 meter and angular velocity is 10 radians per second. So 10 into 0.1 you will be getting 1 meter per second is the linear velocity of point B with respect to the zero velocity point or ground. And this same VB I can represent with respect to the instantaneous center I13B. So from I13B to this point B, you can measure the distance from the configuration diagram and you can convert using the scale that you have used for the configuration diagram. And I13B into this angular velocity of third link. So this I center means this link is rotating with respect to this point. So you can write the VB in terms of the instantaneous centers that is V VB will be equal to the distance from instantaneous center I13 to B into angular velocity of link AB. And this is equal to, you are already having, it is equal to 1 meter per second. And from this configuration diagram, you can measure the distance I13 to B. And if you are measuring I13 to B will be equivalent to, after scaling, this will be equivalent to 0.56 meter if you are uh, drawing this configuration diagram properly and if you are scaling uh, or converting using the proper scale then I13B distance will be 0.56 meter then you can find the angular velocity of connecting rod which is asked in this question omega AB equal to VB divided by the distance I13 to B that is 1 meter per second divided by 0.56 and that you will be getting as the angular velocity which is equal to 1.78 radians per second. So this is the answer for the second part of the question. The angular velocity of uh, connecting road or link AB is 1.78 radians per second. And in the first part you are asked the uh, velocity of slider. Velocity of slider means velocity of point A. And with respect to the same instant in a center, you can find the distance from I13 to point A and you can measure. So you can write this VA equal to the distance from I13 to point A into angular velocity of link AB. So now you are having the angular velocity of link AB, which is equal to 1.78 radians per second. And you can measure the distance from the configuration diagram for I13A and you can convert this using the scale that you have used for configuration diagram. Then this distance I13A will be equivalent to after scaling 0.46 meter. So from this you can find the value of VA which is 0.46 into 1.78 and if you are finding that will be equal to 0.82 meter per second. That is the velocity of slider will be equal to 0.82 meter per second. So this is the answer for the first part and the angular velocity we already obtained which is 1.78 radians per second. So this is the way of solving or conducting the velocity analysis of a slider crank mechanism using this instantaneous center method. Hope you understood and thanks for watching.